In this video, I will be making alcohol without yeast. For that, I took 250 grams of sugar, a 1 liter bottle, some raisins, dates or grapes could also be used. Here, boiled water and an airlock. Raisins are said to have live yeast on their surface. Yeast is found mostly on the peel of sweet fruits. Though it is not able to attack the peel and go inside, so these raisins will serve here as a source of yeast. Although the process will take long time than using yeast directly. So first I will dissolve the sugar in water and then pour it inside the bottle. So over here I took some raisins and then I mashed them with my hands and then I added these raisins inside the bottle. I then poured the solution inside the bottle and added 500 ml more water into it. The temperature of the water should not be more than 40 degrees Celsius before adding the raisins, otherwise it will kill the yeast. After adding water, I am adding some more raisins. Now for the airlock, I am taking a glass jet tube of a dropper and a medicine cup in which I made a hole to fit the jet tube tightly. Then I took a cork with a hole and push the jet tube inside it and place the cork on the mouth of the bottle then i took a cap and placed it over the jet tube and then i added some water in the cup now this is airlock this will let the gas to escape out but not let the air to enter in the bottle now this bottle was placed in a dark and warm place now after four days the raisins have started to float which is a good sign that the yeast has activated. Yeast is a fungi. When given suitable environment and food, it starts breeding. After 10 days, bubbles of gas are seen raising from the raisins and a gas is seen escaping from the airlock. This gas is carbon dioxide gas, which is formed by the anaerobic respiration of yeast. Yeast releases an enzyme called invertase which converts sucrose into glucose and fructose and an enzyme called zymase which converts glucose and fructose into ethanol and carbon dioxide. The airlock does not let any air to enter in the system otherwise it may cause the aerobic bacteria to grow which could cause oxidation of ethanol to acetic acid. Therefore all the apparatus and the water was sterilized to kill any unwanted bacteria. After 40 days, I saw no more gas escaping from the airlock, so I removed the airlock and placed the bottle cap over it. Even after a day, no pressure is formed in the bottle, which means either the sugar has been consumed or the increase in ethanol concentration killed the yeast. The ethanol concentration would be about 12 to 15 percent, so I need to distill the ethanol. But we can't just simply distill. So to extract the ethanol from this solution, I will be performing fractional distillation. So as you can see here, I placed a 500 ml round bottom flask in the clamp, which suspends it in the vessel, which is placed on an induction heater. To the vessel, I am adding some oil. So I will be heating my round bottom flask by the induction heater via an oil bath. To the round bottom flask, I add my ethanol solution and I set the apparatus as shown here, which consists of a 45 cm vigorex column which is placed on the flask, onto which a steel head is placed containing a thermometer which then connects to a Liebig's condenser, which connects to a receiving adapter and then finally a conical flask is kept as a receiver. The water is circulated in the condenser by means of a water pump and the induction is turned on and the temperature control is set to 120 degrees Celsius. After some time the solution in the flask begins to boil and we see rise in temperature in the thermometer to 78 degrees Celsius. 
which is the boiling point of 95% ethanol water azeotrope. And we also see some distillate coming out from the receiver. The temperature becomes constant at 78 degrees Celsius. After some time, the temperature starts rising above 80 degrees Celsius. So the heating is reduced. Now the distillate is slowly formed, but the temperature is maintained at 80 degrees Celsius. After some time, temperature starts falling below 78 degrees Celsius. So I again increase the heating and kept on repeating this until a time came that the temperature in the thermometer went to 96 degrees Celsius. At this point, I stopped the distillation in the receiver have around 35 ml of distillate. To check its concentration, I filled a pre-weighed 25 ml volumetric flask with it and then measured its mass in this way. I will calculate its density and also measured the temperature which was 20 degrees Celsius. Then I used a concentration density chart of ethanol to find its concentration and it was found to be 86%. I distilled the other batch also in the same way and I got a total of 72 ml of 86% ethanol. I took this distillate along with the distillate that I got in the previous video where I made alcohol using yeast and again fractionally distilled it and this time I collected only the fraction that came between 76 to 80 degrees Celsius. I again checked this density in the same way and it was found to be 0.804 gram per ml which meant that ethanol concentration was 94 to 95%. We cannot go beyond this via fractional distillation as that 95% concentration ethanol and water form a constant boiling mixture or azeotropes. Regardless of how many times you fractionally distill the concentration rem will remain constant. The total of 220 ml of 95% ethanol was obtained from 750 grams of sugar and 3 liter volume of solution which corresponds to percentage yield of 41.7% which is pretty bad. Now to test it I took a glass bottle and poured my ethanol into it and shook it well to vaporize the ethanol. Then I brought a lit matchstick as at its mouth and we see a not so good whoosh bottle experiment. Anyways, I tried it again but still not so impressive. I upload videos every Tuesday so subscribe to my channel. If you like my work you can support me financially through Patreon and Paypal. Links are given in description.